Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Dauntless. Welcome to the bridge. Please take your stations. This is Star Trek Dauntless Season 1, Episode 3. We are Vorpal Tales, and we perform terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week. Most days, twice a day. If you enjoy scanning the terrifying darkness for the secrets of the cosmos, Sunday we have Unknown Armies and Vampire the Masquerade. On Mondays, Delta Green. On Tuesdays, Mage the Awakening. On Fridays, The Contagion Chronicle. And coming soon, Black Void. On Saturday, a cult one-shot this week, which is a prelude to our long game, which begins in September on Sundays. Starting next week on Saturdays, Wraith the Oblivion. If you prefer to explore adventures in fantastic worlds, on Tuesdays we have Squeaks in the Deep. On Wednesdays we have Deadlands, on Fridays we have the Contagion Chronicle, and in September on Saturdays, Mutant Year Zero. Be sure to instruct the computer to extract all data from our website at VorpalTales.com so you can incorporate everything into your theoretical models, including recaps of shows, info on cast and events, social media, Patreon, Ko-Fi, and other interesting things about us. Please give us a follow on Twitch if you have not already, as well as subscribe on YouTube to help keep all the awesome shows going. Special thanks to the Foundry for our virtual gaming space, Pond5 for the theme song, and a whole pile of awesome people. Miguel Johnson, CJ Beards, the Makai Symphony, Nioko, Scott Buckley, and Isaac Vale for most of the cool things you hear in this show. Crew of the Dauntless, state your name, rank, and duty assignment. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Uh, pronouns are he, him, and tonight I am playing Lieutenant Ansar Conan, tactical officer. Yeah. Hello, everybody. You know me as ever. You can also call me Ambrose. My pronouns are he, they, and tonight I shall be playing Dr. Sekhem Ekhar, whose pronouns are they, them. Hello everyone, I am Patrick, you know me at PennyShakes underscore, and tonight I am playing Rebecca of House Kundakel, and I'm wearing my glasses because I got some allergy acting up. I'm also going to be a little sniffly tonight. And I am Rosie, regular size mom, and tonight I am playing Deirja Ebosa, Lieutenant Chief Engineer of the Dauntless. Hey folks, I'm JT. You can find me online at Sense of Answer. Tonight I am playing Lieutenant Pick, the Vulcan Chief of Security. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Apparently our transporter accident has not yet been resolved. And our uh, Trill will be rejoining us next week. Ambrose, if you would, please share with us the secrets entwined in the last chapter of this fable. What? Recap? No! All right. The Klingon reads this recap. <clears throat> the old Klingon who needs glasses. Yes. My, more, my warrior days are behind me now. <clears throat> Stardate 99197.21 Official memo. Official memo to Klingon High Council from Robeck House Kundakel. The slog of working with the Federation continues. They seem to have a regulation or rule for everything. Fighting, drinking, borrowing shuttlecraft, and even punishment through beatings have a regulation tied to them. It is truly a marvel that anything gets done. I successfully piloted the shuttlecraft to the, pilot's, to the planet's surface with Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sekem, Lieutenant Pick, Da Ujili, and Federation Dr. Brilo Sheep. We laid it in the city, as it seemed something in it prevented the flora from covering it. While the doctors examined the plants, Pick and Ujili went back to the shuttle to get position beacons for the, transport to, for the transporter to lock onto the planet matter, as both doctors had declared it safe enough to use. On their way back, a building exploded, injuring Ujili, but fortunately Pick was able to pre perform some emergency first aid and they retrieved the pylons and started to make their way back. Meanwhile, a plant attacked Dr. Brillo, nearly, landing her, nearly leading her to lose a hand. But Sekem was able to stymie the infection and advise an emergency field surgery. I carried Dr. Brillo back to the shuttle, Dr. Sekem in tow, where we met with Pick and Ujili. I advised Ujili, Dr. Brillo, and Dr. Sekem to go to the shuttle while Pick and I planted the beacons. 
While Pick and myself battled the vegetation while we planted beacons, Ujuli had to battle the doctors as the plants seemed to infect and then cause those infected to want to infect others. Ujuli ended up losing an arm, but all were either healed or incapacitated by the time we returned to the shuttle. We were debriefed, and it was determined that an entity used a powerful remote transport beam to effect change on the flora, as well as collect all the living beings to be abducted. The Federation fools found it best to follow this ship blindly, thinking they could make friends. But those who did this are clearly conquerors, and we should go prepared for battle, as opposed to looking to make friends. Finally, we received a distress, an encoded distress call that was determined to be Romulan. I advised trickery, but, against, but again, the damn Federation and the regulations deemed it necessary to go to this distress, distress call with arms wide open. Our warriors will stand ready and at battle stations. I'll be ready to take command of this ship if necessary. I will not lose another ship to the Romulans. Thank you. And we'll jump right into it. Uh, you drop out of warp because Ansar had you head to the ship that's in distress. And you see that it's a configuration of Romulan starship you've never seen. Uh, it dwarfs you. It's got a unique design where there's a bridge in the middle that's elongated. It has curves. And then around the edge, it almost looks like wings, except it's an ellipsoid. And then it's completely hollow in the middle. The guns and the cells are on the edges. And it's very green. This, of course, is the one you see in Star Trek The Next Generation. It is super massive. And the first thing that Tactical can read on this ship is that it is capable of firing all weapons in a perfect 360 degree arc, which even you are not. Meaning it could attack uh, contenders on all sides simultaneously. That's not necessary, Betty. Um, I do a scan for, um, do just do the, 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 the normal tactical, uh, scans as we approach, um, what systems are active, life signs, things like that. There are 500 and change life signs, and one very strange anomalous reading. Kind of reads like a life sign, but it keeps spiking, sometimes off the chart, and then, uh, Shields are down, weapons are not seem to be offline, but the ship has power and it's undamaged. Uh the Commodore's not on the bridge, right? Commodore is stepping off the turbo lid the turbo lift about the time you decide what you're gonna do next. Okay. Um I'll report to him uh, just very quickly to be like, mm. Commodore Systems read that there are approximately 500 life forms on. Systems are operational, but their weapon systems are not turned on currently, and their shields are down. They're not They're not responding to hails because you're trying to hail us, given the answer is no. Uh, they are correct. They're unresponsive to hails. That's strange. Why don't we? And then the ship changes into one of the old-timey original series Romulan Warpers right before your eyes, just BAM! in a flash of white light. But it still has the same amount of life signs. Sir, I'm going to assume that your question is, what are the changes to the readings after that particular incident? Uh, he sits down in the main... chair and says, sure, that. <laughs> All systems uh, and readings uh, maintain status. Nothing's changed except the entire ship. Which reads like perfectly normal for a ship of its class, except as if it was brand new, even though those ships would all be like 200 years old. Weird article readings around the hull, though. Uh, Do you have any reason to think that they 
um, know that we're here yet? They haven't scanned you at all. They'll just okay. sending out the distress signal. Perhaps they're stuck in some odd time fluctuation or time sink of some sort. Scanning for tachyon anomalies. None found. Hmm. How Should close we... are, um, if we're, are we close enough to see something out of the like visual in visual range? Yeah, that's how or... you could see it transform on the screen. Okay. Right. Okay. Somebody at the con said magnify a thousand percent, but you know, you can see it. Okay. Um. So the Commodore will give orders, but you guys can decide what you want to do. That's how we play this system. Feel free. That'll be okay. what the well, Commodore tells you to do. Sure, sure. Uh, I guess our options at this point, since we can't communicate with them, are to either try to beam someone over here or send a boarding party. Does anyone else have any ideas? I just think it's pretty neat that we have stealth capabilities and feel like that could be an appropriate thing to try out at this time. Then there's another flash of white light and it changes back to its original configuration, but the paint is a rainbow hue now, mostly pastels. I like this idea of being beaming over one of the crew members or passengers aboard the ship. If we were to beam them into the sick bay, we could put a quarantine field. And then, uh, your comm channel pops open as if it had been self-activated, and a voice comes through and says, No, no, we'll come visit you. It's much more hospitable that way. The Commodore starts to say something, and then there's a flash of white light. And the Commodore disappears, and in the captain's chair, John Delancey in a Star Trek uniform eating some purple grapes. Permission to come aboard! Out of character, is there a dog next to him? <laughs> he does not have a dog, no. Dang it. <clears throat> Steve suddenly no longer wants to play this game. Go home. <laughs> I immediately begin scanning him with with a, a medical tricorder. Never seen readings. Like I that will immediately. You can't make any heads or tails of them. Am I? I'm just gonna immediately have my phase around him and and. Uh sort of quietly call for backup from security. Uh, oh, no, there's I no need for any of that. And your phaser is now a bouquet of roses. Um, do I see any readings uh, on the engineering side that would indicate how he got aboard without our awareness? Nope. Then she's gonna look at him and go, how did you do that? And then he like steps over to you and grabs your hand and kisses it dramatically and says, my dear, I can do anything I want. Perhaps you could explore the universe with me someday. I think we're are doing all, all right. I don't think you belong here. You seem lost. Um, yes, Alicide, this is cute. Telepathy on this guy. What's it telling me? Go tunes at full volume in your head. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Out of character, you... when. Oh, sorry, Steve. No, no, go ahead. Out of character when all else fails, you you poke it. Sekem will poke the entity. Feels firm, yet soft, like a person. That's a very rude, excuse me, doctor. Then he finally notices Robeck for the first time and says, You don't look like you fit in here, let me fix that. And now you're wearing a Starfleet uniform. <sighs> 
Um, thank you. Uh, are, are you the, are you doing that to the Romulan ship? I'm not. My protege is. And who are you? I'm Q. Pleased to meet you. Um, Just Q? Yes, kind of like how you're just pick. Fair. Lieutenant (laughs) Pick. We're new to the quadrants. Uh, are, are, are there a lot of people like you around here? My dear, there's no one like me. Okay. Great. So, can you tell us about this distress signal? Oh, I'm sure they were trying to call for help because they didn't like us meddling with their affairs, but you know. Allow me to be a little bit more direct, Mr. Q. Um, you've made some, out- some outrageous claims so far in just a few short seconds. You can do whatever you want. You are a galaxy explorer. You have changed the clothing of our friend, Mr. Robeck. You have a protege. What exactly are you? What are you doing here? And he is either possessed or disappeared our Commodore. I was wondering, that, where that's... is the Commodore? I explained to you my purpose. I'm here with my protege as he evaluates the Romulans over there. Can we have We're here to add a little excitement, a little spice to your lives. All those Romulans do is complain. You'll have to forgive them if they are confused as us. Perhaps just that they aren't fully understanding the situation. Well, frankly, I'm not fully, I'm not fully understanding this situation either. I'm curious how you got here. You're far from home. Space magic. <laughs> Uh, some kind of malfunction in a couple of different ships happened at the same time, and now we're here. Fascinating. It's a bit early, though. We're going to evaluate your kind later. I have my eye on a specific one of you. Seems fascinating. I see. So, you're aware of the Federation. I am. So you're able to get to Federation space. Go anywhere I want. And your Commodore is fine. I've merely replaced him for now. In fact, I could bring him back fully fixed if you want. I could fix the whole ship, bring back your dead crewmates. At what cost? You just have to prove your worthiness. How, pray tell, do we do that? He gets a look in his eye like thinking or something's happening far away, but you get the sense, Ansar, he's communicating with someone or something else. Probably this protege of ship. But you can't read anything. It's just show tunes. And by proving that you can work together because there are things out there space that you can't possibly understand you are incredibly not ready for he glances towards the side of the ship that faces well you know where towards the delta quadrant i don't fully understand you uh your tiny brain would be impossible fully comprehending me or my maybe my magnificence Oh. 
it appears as though you have us at a disadvantage. You are freely able to move about our ship, have our Commodore, and knowledge of areas we don't know. I'd like to work with you, both in obtaining knowledge and getting home. That's what we want. Let's see how true that is, shall we? And in a flash of light, he disappears, and the Romulan ship fully powers up as if all systems have been restored, and its shields immediately come online, and its weapons power up, and they open a hail. Um, Still no Commodore. On screen. Uh, the view changes to show a black matte metal and silver bridge area way more efficient is a good word for it than yours very streamlined uh no hard ridges everything is rounded and very elegantly architectured with the bridge and then it goes back into like a hallway that is very machine like and everything is bathed in green light and there are three people in the view screen one in the middle in a chair and two flanking him on the left and right and the ones flanking are both females the one in the chair is a male they're very romulan they're wearing uh, high-shouldered silver tunics with an interesting chain or something coming down the neckline. Their hair is cut exactly like picks. It's the first time any of you have ever seen a live Romulan, because they haven't been in contact with the Federation in decades. This is not the first time Robeck has seen one, though. Federation Starship, identify yourself and speak the reason for trespassing in Romulan space. You're in violation of the treaty and are definitely not in the neutral zone. Um. Hello, this is Lieutenant Ansar Conan of the uh, USS Dauntless. Lieutenant, where's your commanding officer? I believe you might know of a particular troublesome fellow. Robeck, give me a notice check. So, uh... So we're looking for uh, roll plus security in this case. Okay. Uh, one success with, uh, yeah, one success. He's not a captain either. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll do that thing where they mute comms really quick, but every, everything just seems normal, even though they've clearly muted comms and they're having a side conversation. <laughs> but neither, neither side cares, but they always do it. Yeah. And I just do the do 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 do. Lieutenant, you are speaking to a fellow lieutenant. In the Romulan Empire, he does not hold the standing of captain or commander. I see. Thank you, Mr. Robeck. Unmute. You have Klingons on your ship. Interesting. We do. So you're we here find... to start a war then? No, we find alliances. What other reason to... would you bring Klingons into our space in a ship clearly designed for war, not exploration? As your vaunted federation so obviously lies when it says that's its only purpose in space. This is not Romulan space either. Silence, Klingon. From one lieutenant to another, please do not speak to anybody on our ship that way. Yes, My we are apologies, long... lieutenant. They were just used to speaking to our dogs that way. There's the very obvious sound of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> gnashing on, on the gnashing of teeth. I've introduced myself. Um, may we have your name? Uh, 
You can call me Captain Chiron. Which is C-H apostrophe capital R-I-H-A-N, Patty. So nice of him to spell it. <laughs> I'm sorry, one more time. C-H apostrophe capital R-I-H-A-N. Cool. Thank you, Acting Captain Sharon. And yes, yes, we are we are yes, a long way there from are home. metal some entities in this sector of space, it appears. Yes. Which is partially to do with why we are here. We do not want to be here. We want to leave. We do not want to be anywhere in this quadrant. But unfortunately, those troublesome entities have our Commodore, and I'm going to take a educated guess. They also have your captain. The I think your silence. The security complement of our ship is no concern of yours. However, perhaps we should speak. Would you like to come to our ship and discuss? Mute. <laughs> it's Robert. Lieutenant, that is clearly a trap. Yes, Mr. Robeck, I'm aware that all Romulans are nefarious and treacherous and that this is most likely a trap according to you. <clears throat> Not according to me, to all of written Klingon history. I liked them for about five seconds, maybe. Uh, but uh, they're starting to sound a little too Cardassian for my taste. And <laughs> Five um, seconds too long, Chief. Uh, uh, honestly, I don't understand what they could have to say that they can't say over comms this way. Sometimes you don't know a person until you sit across a table from them. Oh, Lord. You Easier silly to stab federations someone and your way. treaties and your negotiations. A flash that is of how light. you lose constantly to the Robin. There's a flash of light and Q is right next to your ear leaning over your chair, answer. Fascinating culture, wouldn't you say? When you have dinner, you should definitely partake of the ale. And then in a flash of light, he's gone. Okay. Apparently that guy wants you to go. Perhaps if when walking into a trap, we spring it on our own terms. And then just his disembodied voice from the air. You should bring the doctor. It'll be worth it. Trust me. Oh, we're puppets now. Great. Great. Springing a trap still springs it. It only, only benefits the trap setter. Reopen the hail, please. Wait. Oh. I can produce a hypo that will put them out if anything should happen. They will screen you for any arms, armaments, or foreign objects when they transport you over. Yes, but it will look like medicine. They will also screen. They will also screen for that. Doctor, have faith. Patty, how much Trust. do you as the player know about Rockland's? Uh, a therapist? Okay, good. Well, I take care of Noisy here. Please feel free to explain to these other players about the Tal Shiar they would have no knowledge of. Oh, yes. So the Tal Shiar would be like your, uh, they'd be like the, they'd be like the, uh, what are we, Section 31 or whatever the Federation equivalent is. Yeah. Where super secret behind the scenes, uh, they are like, they're, they're one of those kind of like the Romulan government does not officially recognize, you know, the Tal Shiar. They don't actually exist, but they kind of run everything. Uh, they're behind like all the, all the craziness that happens. Any like significant Romulan plot line that happens in any of the TV shows, is usually like, oh my gosh, they were a Tal Shiar agent the whole time. Ah! Oh, they're the Inquisition. <laughs> it's the kind bad of, guy, yes. bad guys. Yeah, like, even the bad guys are like, whoa, those guys sometimes take it a little too far. Uh, 
And are we saying this so that we know this as players, or would Robeck su suspect that they are? We will say Robeck gave you a fast rundown in character, even though Patty was the one talking. Yeah, the fed yeah, you Federation people would probably won't even know the Tau Shard even existed up until this point. Yeah. Okay, so they are the ones that organize and green light bombings and secret terrorist plots. They are the ones that go behind enemy lines, talk to your government dissidents, fuel those who would usurp others so that you are weak and then their Romulan, their might of the Romulan Empire can bear down upon you and add them to your collection into their collection. Oh, they're the Obsidian Order. All right. Uh yes, a group of highly specified and skilled people in a secret group that go behind they're enemy us. lines. Except they have no morals, no honor. And this is pretty far from actual Romulan space, despite all their posturing. At least what you understand yeah. is Romulan space. Right. I'll just say, um, Dr. Mr. Robeck, have faith. Unmute. Thank you for your patience. We just had to do a quick security check. We would be honored to board your ship and meet for negotiations of, an, of a temporary alliance. Excellent. We'll beam you over when you are ready. And then the communication goes dead. Okay. Doctor, we're going to treat this as though we are making an, an alliance. We don't go with plans of treachery or undercutting. And go out to of your character, death, you would take the entire bridge crew, which includes Robert. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to keep everyone in the episode, yeah. Right. It's protocol. Can... <laughs> right? <laughs> Only what you do. You send your entire... Uh, yeah, that makes total tactical sense. All the main characters go. <laughs> Always send your entire senior staff to an unknown situation with a violent enemy, yes. <laughs> you know, if that's how the ensigns end up running everything, it'll be fine. Acting Captain Ansar, what am I meant to have faith in? Federation. The Federation has no power here at the moment. Not about power. For all intents and purposes, the Federation does not exist here. Doctor, Mr. Robeck, it's not about power or how far the reach of the Federation goes. It's about keeping and withholding, not withholding, keeping and maintaining Federation standards. It's about attitude and being careful what cards you show and play. That is You'll fine. be fine. Just have a little swagger. I think if we're referring to cards, we have a handful of jokers, as do they. That can be anything we want, then. We're in great set. Very well. It seems I have little choice. I must make preparations if I am to face my enemy. All right, everyone take care of what you need to do. Get in the transporter room. And I'll say whatever, you know. Okay. Is there anything that the crew wants to do before actually moving on to that scene? Um... Deirja would just want to remind uh, Robeck that if she was suddenly on a ship with a bunch of Cardassians, she would probably just want to kill them all, but this is not the time. So, chill. You suggest, she... you suggest that I withhold my warrior's rage for the enemy of my people since I was a child. What would you do in this situation, Chief? Oh, well, 
I would find their engine room and blow it all up. But, you know, I don't think that's a great idea right now. So just kind of hold on to your, uh, I don't know, phaser or something and don't do anything quite yet. Flash of light behind the doctor while all this is happening. Q leans in and whispers to you, you should find this especially enlightening, Doctor. Remember what you learn here. It may help you. Then he's gone again. Uh, <laughs> just, just because of that, the Doctor will, in fact, make a sleeping hypo to knock at least someone out in case... Just in case. Okay. Actually, I lied. They'll make two. Okay. Always good to have a backup. Uh, you can go ahead and give me a uh, roll versus your medicine plus your daring to try to make it stealthy, which is going to be 15 or lower. Oh, perfect. I rolled a three and a ten. Very well. You have. Anyone else? Okay, you all assemble in the transporter room. And you beam over to the Romulan ship. Which is all white and green lights, silver corners. Black cushions, sleek ankles. It's very rocky. Okay. Uh, when you arrive on the ship, you all arrive with exactly what you came with, except the doctor, whose hypo seemed to be missing. <laughs> Two was not enough. <laughs> Could try that. You're greeted by Romulans. Just look you up and down, dismiss you. A gesture as if you're supposed to follow them. Not a word is spoken. Oh, I'll follow. Okay. It leads you into a conference room that's been elegantly set up for dinner. Complete with candlelight, fancy plates, silverware that's close to human. The camera never quite shows its fork, though. <laughs> Space fork? Space fork. Uh, glass is full of some kind of blue liquid that you can smell from across the room. Uh, Yum. And plates piled high with food, all of yours of which is, uh, you know, tasteful things you would find at a fancy dinner, and then one plate clearly meant for Robeck that's just like worms squirming everywhere. You're muted, Robeck. Is it Gok? You don't know. It looks similar, but what the hell would Romulan have those? Romulans have those on their ship. Mm. You don't trust it. Yeah, I will not partake. <laughs> Is, um... One of the Romulans says, please sit. Well, thank you very much for your hospitality. We appreciate you having us on board, and putting all of this out for us. Quite. Will acting captain be joining us? Yes. Excellent. Tell him we look forward to his company. I will. And then all the Romulans leave. Um, did it pick? Can you hear us, JT? I don't think he can hear us. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm dealing with relaying problems here. Oh. Um, so I did hear you. I just it didn't click that you were talking to me. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <clears throat> um, is that a pick? Um, the room? Question mark? I don't, I'm sorry. What are you asking? The room? So, uh, 
without, without saying it outright, like I was just saying as the security uh -huh. uh, officer, like, is this room trapped? Are we about to get, you know, poison gas, you know, anything like that? So Yeah, can I... Did he yep, freeze anyone else? Uh-oh. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes, he did. No. Doom. Probeck. Okay. Please roll well, security um, plus uh, daring for... Or, I'm sorry, security plus... Wow. Control for pick. It's target number for that. Is it 12? 13. We'll call it 13. I'll do it. Okay. Um, I would also probably be doing something similar, except apart from uh, Deirge is more looking for uh, something she could quickly rig up to be a bomb or something that might already be placed in the room. You don't need to roll. Nothing like that is in here. It would put anything you could use against them in this room. Uh, a the 4 and a 19 for pick. A 4 so, does fall under his focus of security. Yeah, but say if it falls, it's probably two successes mm -hmm. if he could use one of those focuses. So, this room has like at least six cameras with your listening devices to catch it. He can catch it at a glance. The doctor would like to scan the food if they still have their medical tricorder and also um, try and get a, a an empathy read on the Romulans. There are no Romulans in the room. They all left you alone. When they come back. 16 or lower for the food. Uh, what pick tells you, Ansar, is it seems that there are six glasses of Romulan ale and uh, two servings of Doc. Oh, yeah. Cameras, listening devices, and phone. Nine and a twelve. Nothing's wrong with the food, as far as you can tell. And it's not it God; seems... it's just Romulan earthworms. Uh, not uh, those are Romulan earthworms, and I'll just like flip the bowl. <laughs> the rest of the food seems safe to consume. I don't know what Ansar thinks about that. That's good. That's a little rude. Is it? Let us remember. Shut up! <laughs> I'm gonna right, try. I guess uh, Cardassians talk and they're cocky and they give you something to exploit and they play with their food a bit. These Romulans aren't giving me anything. To... I'm gonna they're try communicating fun. with. I'm gonna try communicating with the Dauntless. Roebuck to bridge. Nope. Roebuck to Klingon warriors. Nope. All communications are being blocked. I'm just going to stare at Ansar. <laughs> uh, Deirge is going to attempt to leave the room. Uh, you walk to the door and it won't open. But that wouldn't surprise you. Why would they let you wander the ship unescorted? How long has it been? Five minutes. If that all right, not not long. No, you all were right, doing all these fine. things simultaneously. Yeah, we're professionals. Mr. Robeck, it's to be expected that they would jam tra uh, communications and transmissions. There's nothing out of the ordinary so far. As a matter of fact, at this so, point, Mr. Robeck, the single biggest act of aggression has been the flipping of a certain bowl. If you keep telling me how to act amongst my enemies, your command will be short and without glory. Mr. Robeck, I believe it's about time that you realize the war that you're referencing is several billion light years away. And clearly still in the minds of these who are hosting us. They are, we it are should outside. be on your mind too. I have a lot of things on my mind, Mr. Robeck. 
as I'm sure you do too. One of us is just choosing to express it louder. Um, Lieutenant Conan, uh, in the interest of goodwill, maybe when our hosts do return, we offer whatever assistance we we can. I've never done anything on a Romulan ship, but I'm happy to offer help with They whatever. would sooner kill you than give up the secrets of their technology. That's fine. We'll have offered at least. They can always say no. You try to parlay with a per- with an entity you know nothing about, and you ignore the one person who has dealt with these beings. That's when the door opens. More recently than a hundred years. That's when the door opens. And then then three people you recognize from the communication step through along with two more Romulans. I stand as Starfleet protocol. Mm -hmm. That would be the the same for all of you except probably Robeck. I never sat down. Neither did (laughs) Deersha. Oh, oh, we were offered seats, so okay. (laughs) No. Uh, He looks around. Uh, gotta keep action dynamic in the shot. You gotta be up and down and up and down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, the, the acting captain sweeps into the room. He looks like in Earth years. It's the equivalent of his late 30s. He's kind of imposing in real life. He's 6'2", all around the muscle. Like He could stand neck up next to Robeck, and Robeck would not look bigger. Like so his that, shoulder pads are like... His shoulder pads are like out two feet or something? Yeah. He does not dwarf Robeck, which is a new thing, because Robeck dwarfs all of you. <laughs> um, hmm. The other two are more normal size and build. He says, ah, yes, you must be answer. Excellent. Sit down, won't you? And he does not introduce anyone else that comes in with him. They all just take their seats. Thank you so much. Yes, I am Lieutenant Ansar, and this is my bridge crew, Dr. Sakim Eckhart, Chief Engineer Durja Abosa. Chief of Security, Lieutenant Pick, and Klingon Federation Liaison, Mr. Robeck. My first officer, my tactical officer, my con officer, my security officer. They just nod at you. Well, the Romulans sit down. Are any of you still not sitting? I. Uh, Robak would definitely not sit. Uh, Dr. Sakam would sit after the enemy has sat. Yeah, Deirja will sit, but very gingerly. Like she's expecting the chair to do something. The mimic! <laughs> <laughs> it's a Um This is all a holodeck uh, simulation. They're hollow sweet. It's like 20 Romulans getting ready to shoot you. <laughs> Anybody who has at least three security, please roll security plus control. That's gonna be me. Do I have any at all? You have. You do have three. So yes, you can. Uh-huh. Um, oh, are we asking for a security check? Only if you have at least three points in it, and then it would be. I do. I do. I do. I do. Got a uh, six and a seventeen. Okay. Is it security and control? Yep. One success with a complication for me. No successes and a complication for me. Two successes. Only Deirja notices. When he was making and introductions... Pick, pick had no successes either. Okay. Only Deirja notices that when you're introducing uh, the personnel to you, he looks all of you in the eye when it comes to... Uh, Sekum's character, the flicker of something in his eyes, almost like recognition. It's very subtle. He has very good control. And perhaps mild surprise. When he grabs his glass and says a toast to our negotiations. 
I will do the half-hearted Picard toast. <laughs> Does anyone not take a drink of Rock in the Nail? It would be very rude nope. not to. Nope. Um, actually, actually, I'll, 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 please, I'll, please I'll even subordinate in line. I'll even one up that. I'll take the ale like I'm about to drink it, and then I'll just upend it. Oh no! And let it pour out. Cold silence better, envelops the room. A better use for that piss. Cold silence envelops the room, and four Romulans, all but the captain, reach for disruptors. You've got assuming. a good Picard split second to do something, Ansar. Oh, yeah. I immediately use uh, Diffuse Detention. Okay. Um, just one of my talents. Um, I'm assuming this would be the same time, like, Pick would, like, take an aggressive stance and Robex yeah. probably about to dive across the table and cling on clothesline. For disruptors. Pick's going for his phaser that isn't there, so he grabs the knife. <laughs> right. And I'll just, and I'll just kind of put my hands up for the Federation side and kind of look and look at the, um, the the other lieutenant acting captain and just be like, "There's no need for violence. We're here on a diplomatic mission." No, and my hands are like out like this from my side. Roll it. I assume uh, that has a specific role. Isn't that one of your talents? Yeah, it's yeah. my talent. I thought I was just able to negate violence once per That might scene. be it. We should double check. Uh, yeah, let me double check. Uh, diffuse the tension. Oh, that's no good. Jeez. Uh... Whenever you attempt a task to persuade someone not to resort to violence, you add a bonus d20. Yep. And... Which, in this case, is going to be diplomacy. You finally get to uh... make a diplomacy post. I was going to say, so yeah, so I've got, so I'm doing a task, so. Control um, plus command with a bonus die. You want it to be control yep. plus command with a bonus or, die. Or presence if it's better. Uh, control and presence are the same. Okay. And any negotiating specialties would apply or focuses. I have, yeah, I, I would have two for right now. I have both diplomacy and confrontation. Okay. So a bonus die and you can. Uh, how much, um, Patty, how much, um, momentum have we stored up? Uh, we have seven. Do anyone mind if I take no, three go for it. to make oh, this three. five dice? Go ahead. Jesus. Sure. Very wise. Get it done. That's your temperamental. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> that bad, huh? Yikes. Remember those? I uh, mean, remember those? If uh, it's D and D rules, we're doing great. Yeah, if it's D and D rules, I just one shot the bad guy. Um. <laughs> remember, if you have not used either of your generic milestones, those are also bonus die. If you want to be. There's also you can use your determination. Yep. Which is not a success, how that works. which means you'll just get complications with a success. But two successes. Determination counts as if you'd rolled a one. Okay, counts as a, okay. And that's how your milestones uh, work too. Your general milestones are like three determination. Okay. I got two successes and a complication. Okay. Um because with two complications, and this is really bad, I'll use the determination, especially with the complication, and I will make that four successes. Okay. So, uh, you can tell us what you say, but your complication is you accidentally give some something tactical away because you're a little nervous, so you're getting 
incorporate that into whatever you say in character. I don't care what. Okay. At the same time that you're trying to do that, keep a straight face. Uh, Robeck spills the ale onto his own shoe, gets mad, slips, lands on his ass. That's his complication. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Yikes. Damn, you did me dirty there. <clears throat> um, I'll just I'll just be like, uh, what's his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, it is Shiran. I'm just gonna put that in. Thank you. And he is their equivalent. I, I know that might not be right. Because the way Romulan hierarchy works, the old captain. Yeah, yeah, gone. yeah. They just That's go. It. That's the end. Just, yeah. Um. Also, while you're thinking, I'll tell Patty for the notes that uh, it's uh, Sub Commander, since he's not officially the captain yet. Sub Commander Shrun. Captain Saran, we are on a diplomatic mission. There's no reason for violence. Please, ha please have your men put it down. We are a long way from home when without hyperdrive, we need to work together. He gives you a long look, smirks a little, and does the hand thing. They're on. Let's relax. One of them is trying very hard not to laugh at Robeck right now. God damn it. The other ones are complete self-control, like Romulan should, but that one guy... <laughs> so much. Warp drive, not hyperdrive. Warp drive. Yeah, that's fine. I, I that's knew what you were Star trying to say. Star Wars creeping in here. It's not All my right. fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're a long way from home without warp drive. We need to work together. Also, both of our commanding officers have been taken by these incredibly powerful and mischievous men. I don't know if they told you the same thing, but I was told that we had to work together to show that we could. So whether you like it or not, and whether any of us like it, like it or like each other in this room. Then there's a flash of light. Work. And there's another guy in the room, but it's not John Delancey. Mm -hmm. He's actually got a bowler hat on and an old fashioned English tweed suit from like the 40s old-fashioned posh British accent and the most mustache mustache ever like Patty's if he was not a Klingon <laughs> and had no chin hair and he says yes and it's quite boring so far you haven't even started shooting each other yet what's wrong with you Klingon stab someone they took my weapons in the transport you have teeth don't you what kind of Klingon are you I would not sully my mouth with Romulan blood. So if the other one was named Q, what is your name? Q, pleased to meet you. Q2? If anything, he's Q2. I see, Q. Well, I apologize that we are boring you. Me and me and Captain Savran are working on our negotiations in order to help each other get back to where we are supposed to be. Whether you find that interesting or not, I don't know what to tell you. Well, you carry on with your negotiations. I'll find a way to entertain myself. And in a flash of light, he's gone. Do you know anything about that man? Nothing other than I cannot atomize him, which disgruntles me greatly. How long have you been here? Two days. Two of your days. Doug Wizard is pretty accurate. Two days. Why can you not mm -hmm. escape? We were brought here by this entity. Like you, we are far from where we should be. He said there were, that there were, they were trying to convince us that there were dangers out here that we could not comprehend. Going to show them to us. And then you came along. I guess you're that danger. And then the sensation of movement, even though there shouldn't be because artificial gravity, but you know how they all like shift when the ship speeds up? 
<laughs> and the camera shows an invisible force shove the two ships apart as both go spinning several light years away from each other. He said he'd find his own entertainment. You are now outside of transporter range of the Dauntless. Can these entities be killed? If you find a way, let us know. Doctor, we need to have a discussion about your eagerness to jump towards violence. Yes, Doctor, we should have a discussion. Tell me about yourself. You fascinate me. I do not wish to discuss myself with you. That's disappointing. I'm sure your history is rich and varied. Let's keep the conversation. Let's keep the conversations professional, please. Are compliments not professional in your federation? Ones that are obviously unwanted. Is not most diplomacy unwanted? But necessary? I very much much want you to work uh, in this diplomatic fashion. Compliments compliments in personal life, um, for the most part, are not necessarily these. We have very specific needs. You're far from home, we are far from home, and we have entities that seem to have unlimited power messing with us. They want us to work together. Let's work together. Or we can come can to your an ship agreement. move now? Or we can come to an agreement, especially since it seems for the moment we have the upper hand. Light Romulan smile. <clears throat> Chief Engineer, you said? Can your ship move now? If they want us separated from the Dauntless, it can't be good. Oh, my ship is fully functional. Great. Can we pursue the Dauntless? By the way, and we'll stop here and say out of character, these are Romulans. If at any point you want to check for lies, you should. Right. You're, I'm not going to tell you if they are or not unless you roll. Go ahead, Dursha. Oh. Sorry. She's asked if they can pursue the Dauntless. That's we could. That's what she needs. Yes. Have. Perhaps once we discuss or agree to terms. Slight Romulan smile. All right. From there, I would like to do the telepathy, empathy, and then also do my own reading. Um, and I am going to use cold reading, um, which I believe gets me one free piece of information about the character. Okay. Normally, you um, don't have to roll for telepathy, but I'm going to have you do it this time. Not to make contact, but to, dis- to decipher what you're getting. <laughs> okay. So we'll just do control and command. Two successes. Two successes. Okay. Which one? The captain or one of the others? The captain. Okay. Uh, Massive amounts of confidence and superiority. Is amused how little you know about the situation even compared to himself. And... Complete lack of fear or apprehension. Utter confidence. Okay. So that's the telepathy, empathy part. Uh, can I do an actual, like... Yep, now you can use dip- your power. Yeah. Um, so cold reading... Is that the one from the, the other book? Probably. Generates one bonus momentum, which must be used for the obtain information. Okay, so I got to succeed on the task. Okay, if the social conflict involves the extent of task, the character gains a scrutinize one benefit. All right, so I need a task to roll during a social conflict. Uh, insight plus command seems appropriate. Insight plus command. Um, And I'm going to say this falls under several of my focuses. 
well, diplomacy, yeah, espionage, yeah. confrontation. Espionage specifically will apply to anything on this ship for any of you. <laughs> okay. Also, yeah. Uh, go ahead and do this roll, or you're this roll first, and I'll tell you. Yeah. I'm going to take one more momentum and make this 3d20. Okay. Amazing. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, that is one, two, three successes. Excellent. And at that moment, everyone except Robeck is now minus one die to all rolls. The Rami the Nail begins kicking in. It's the most important alcohol in the galaxy. Answer. Three successes is plenty. What do you want to know within the boundaries of the power? Um. Well, so the power is that I gain... Obtain information. Um, yep. So I get, I want to know, you know, just like, I mean, I, what's the, what's the actual capabilities of a ship? Like, you know, is this just bluster confidence? Not like, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't quite know exactly what question to ask at the moment. Oh. Um, I'm just literally trying. It's Cole reading, so it's like what jumps out to me about him that I can use. He does think he's fully in control of the vessel. But he's not as familiar as you would think of a vessel of this type. Kind of like how you would feel if your ship was functional. As in, yeah, I'm in control, but I don't know anything about this ship because it's a prototype. Okay. Um... He is also, he's in command. There are some people you can just sense it that are not happy about that. Not all of them, but some. Okay. Um, also, because you got three successes, you notice yeah. on a plating somewhere. Has he lied somewhere, to me about anything? Or, or go ahead. Uh, you notice on plating somewhere, uh, classification of the ship, which is a D. Deridex class, which you heard about prototype that your spies have told you was under construction. The Deradex. The Deradex. Okay. Which you can actually Google and that would be the knowledge yeah, you yeah. get. Okay. Alright. All intelligence indicates an extremely deadly, extremely capable ship that could take on four or five standard Federation starships easily. At once. It would far out class five or six thing on Rob well, Warbirds. But Robeck, you've never seen a ship like this. this is really good. <sighs> well, Miss, well, Captain Sub Commander Chiron. It appears as though you are in... I, I, I feel as though you may... Ah, no, sorry. <clears throat> we are willing to work together in a diplomatic fashion so that we are both able to come out in an advantageous situation at the tail end of this. Please don't lose sight of the fact that you are in the exact same situation that we are to a certain degree. You are outside of your territory down a commanding officer dealing with unknown hostile creatures and unlike us you have limited understanding of your ship uh no one else notices but you know you're in the middle of the political battle very slight barely noticeable flinch I assure you lieutenant I'm in full control of my ship, or at least as much as you are of yours, I would suspect. But I do see how working together could be advantageous. Slight flicker of the eyes from one of the other Romulans, a lady. A very a smaller one, but dangerous somehow, anyways. The, the size is, betrays the danger level. Excellent. 
then in that case, I ask if you can, please set a course for the Dauntless. We need to get back to our ship so that we have the combined force needed to get our officers back. First, As of we right now, we terms are... for our arrangement. I'm not simply going to trust you. You're the Federation. The only, yes, the yes. only thing in the galaxy less trustworthy than you is a Klingon. Well, since there's one here for comparison, that should be fairly easy. What what are you suggesting? Wow, you're right on that sass. Nice. <clears throat> Robeck, anything to say about any of that? Nope. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm alone. The Federations aren't Federation aren't on my side. These Romulans are only on my side. I gotta bide my time so I can make a play. Um I think we can try to help each other at least figure out how to deal with these entities. For now, that's enough. We will not trade you information about our ship. Understood. And if we do yeah, really. figure out how to get around these entities, perhaps we can again discuss further helping each other return home. But if we should reach Romulan space, you're on your own. It will not help you after that. Ah. Your charity stretches as far as the Romulan Empire. And we will need to get to know each other better. Over time, not accept these terms. I look forward to getting to know you better and defeating these entities. Dinner commences then. What, is, if anything, interests you to specifically pursue for any of you uh, during dinner? Besides very subterfuge small talk. I've talked for a long time. Someone else can go. Uh, Deirja honestly does not have a whole hell of a lot to say. Um, yeah, you don't have to say anything. But you can describe yeah. what you're doing. I'll take that. Uh, Deirja eats politely. Uh, stops drinking the ale because she's feeling it. Uh, and just observes really there are some aspects of these romulans that remind her of cardassians but they don't talk enough for her and that makes her on that makes her uneasy she's used to cardassians being charismatic and talking and giving away stuff just to prove they're smart this makes her very uneasy okay Robeck, just gonna kind of stand there, look at your wet boot, seethe. I don't eat anything, I don't drink anything. I just spend my time sizing people up and uh, silently eavesdropping on conversation to see if I can get any tactical information at all. Okay. Security plus control. Control is better than insight for this one. Unless you want specifically tactical information about these five Romulans, then it would be insight. You choose. No. Okay. I, I, want, I don't. Ship. I don't care about them. I don't care about them specifically. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want the ship. I would like to embassy these Romulans now that they are in the room. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, just barely two successes. Okay. Uh, you notice subtle power fluctuations now and then, which may give you a tactical advantage in the form of a bonus die later if you're ever fighting them. Write that down and remind me. When the engine does this, the power levels change slightly, is what you're noticing. Or... The throne is stronger from this side of the room, indicating engineering is there, which is where we should aim during a fight, that sort of thing. Uh, second, 
without rolling, what you get is extreme confidence from the leader, from the sub commander, uh, from the two ladies that you saw on the view screen before. Indifference, passiveness. One of the other two is a dude. Uh, extreme curiosity and a desire to pay attention. And then from the other lady, the super dangerous looking one, uh, discontent, plotting. And all of her attention is focused on you. Dinner ends. Agreements are struck. Oh. Go ahead, answer. The one thing I wanted to do was during my talk, and I'm talking to the sub commander or captain, um, but I want you know I'm I'm kind of more aiming this at the 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 dangerous one. I'll talk about my past, kind of like you know small talking up, and just be like. Um, You know, I heard a story of a first officer, one that um, was especially honorable and followed their their guiding principles as closely as possible. But once out in space, once out in exploration, it was strength of leadership that it mattered above all else. This first officer never let their commander get away with anything that endangered or disrespected the crew. Sometimes to their own detriment, sometimes even at the expense of the captain. Weak command is dangerous. You said something new from Sub Commander towards you, Ansar. Respect. But locking eyes with you, but clearly not talking to you, he says, that is a good tale. There are many fairy tales on the Romulan in the whole world, too, and I'm sure they all have the same thing in common that your Earth fairy tales do. Children who don't listen to their parents get eaten. <laughs> They're usually baked into pies, I believe, back on Earth. Something similar in our fairy tales. Oh. And then I will turn in my seat, kind of adjust, and I glance at the the first officer, just so that the, you know, I'm trying to fester those ideas of the slightest of nods. Yeah. Once dinner is over, being escorted through the ship back to the transporter room is the sub commander, his two ever present people. Security guards. Uh, Are we back in range of the Dauntless? And the other lady. Dinner takes like an hour by then. They sure. Pop back up to where your ship is. Okay. Uh, how for... are these? How are the security uh, outfitted? Are they outfitted like they consider us an actual threat? So, so you know how? I assume you know. The, the standard phaser on a starship is that little tiny one that fits in your hand, but security carry the actual handheld ones, and then they have the rifles. All these officers are carrying the disruptive version of the rifle. Oh, here's just <laughs> smiles at them and goes, oh, you're taking us seriously. I am Better. flattered. So flattered. They ignore you stoically. Uh, but for story reasons, Disgruntled Lady and Sekum are behind the rest of the group. And Robek and Ansar notice this, but not necessarily catch it all. She's trying to make idle small talk with you, Sekum, but you're being Sekum, I assume, and not really engaging unless you say otherwise. Correct. And right before you get to the transporter room in an empty part of the hallway, she leans in and whispers in the book for rule. Elev, Susthrai. Activated. What are your instructions? Kill the sub commander. And that's really Rosie's face. 
And that's where we go on break. We'll be back in the 10 minutes. The what? Don't go anywhere, audience. We'll return in 10. <laughs> Thank you.
back from break. So, normally the person with the highest daring goes first in Star Trek combat, which by the way, I've got the book open. We're going to take our time, make sure we do it right, so we don't inadvertently play Conan or Fallout and do something wrong. Uh, <laughs> however, Sekum's going first. You were given your instructions, Sekum. No hesitation, no remorse. Oh boy. So, uh, Sekem goes from this very stiff, very, like, just stoic movement to very fluid and very precise. Kind of what you've seen in, in when they're operating on someone or, for instance, on the planet with the killer plants. Uh, that, that strange martial arts move on that one Klingon. Um, they will kind of slip their way through the rest of their allies, question mark. And go to um, Oh, okay. Uh, a, a knife will be grabbed. And then they will go for Three D20? Okay, hold on. I gotta get me another D20. So the first two were a 12 and a 9. And a 1. I wanted a knife. This shall happen. Two dice or three? Five, two, and eleven. Why can't I roll this well when I'm not? Jesus Christ. Sorry, guys. Also, do you know how hard it was to keep this secret? Oh my god. <laughs> it's so hard to keep secrets for me. Well, fun ones anyway. Ooh, player wants to let everyone make their moves, but um, the smartness of an assassin, I'd totally take advantage and use that. Uh, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let everyone else go because I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> um. I have a 10. Um. Oh, or. Oh, uh. I have a 7. Yeah, that's, that's the normal combat rules. You have to select an enemy to go next. Usually. Uh, does the sub commander have a uh, knife on them? Yeah, I'm gonna rip that knife out of his guts. Big maniacal smile as I see the green Romulan blood run down its blade. 
and then I'm. Yeah, no, I'm gonna make that uh, that injury. I'm gonna make sure that's, that's. I'm gonna double tap for sure as I'm pulling it out. Um, and then I'm just gonna whirl around and go for. And I'm specifying this as I have the uh, talent uh, killer's instinct. Uh, I'm going to lethally attack the Romulan closest to me. Uh, I'll be using my focus. I'll be using my focus of blades, uh, and the short action focus plus security is three successes. Oh, probably even more. Uh, no, th uh, and then the long action is three successes again. Was that was that what the is that what the long action was? Oh, okay. Three. My Betty says that they can't hear you. I kicked OBS. Hey, you pulled a me. Chat, can you hear him now? Tyler, say something. Yes, we're good. Hey. The only thing you missed is the sub commander's dead. Super dead. Super dead. Apparently, death was his complication. Okay. <laughs> Avoiding injury is momentum. Uh, roll back so it is different than the other ones we've done. Not actually a roll. If you take injury, then you avoid it by spending two momentum. Which makes sense, because I spent threats in the wrong parity. Gotcha. Uh, are, they are they lethally attacking me? or Oh yeah, disruptors do not have a stunt setting. Only phasers. Okay. Disruptors uh, have painful death and super painful death. Um, then I will add, since you use, since you kind of just, you just say, tell me we'll use some, uh, I will add a threat to increase the difficulty of landing that lethal hit on me. That's also part of my killer's instinct talent. Okay. I'm going to say, because you're paying me for it. Not only do you manage to take cover, you do it behind another Romulan who, scre <laughs> who screams as he disintegrates with his voice echoing into eternity. You all know you've seen it. Yay! And they pass it to uh, Dersha. Uh, we were on our way to the transporter. How close are we to you can it at see, this You point? can see the room. And a Romulan she coming makes out of a... it with a disruptor. Um, yeah, she is going to try and grab a disruptor there's a from... fresh one there's a fresh one from the one that just died on the ground great she'll snag that on her way to run to the transporter because she has the best chance of getting it to work <laughs> the sub commander is dead spring by fucking not second so the federation crew just assassinated the captain not on ship. purpose 
All right, so you want to use your full turn to move into the transporter room. You can get all the way in there if you do, but you can't take any other actions yet, but you'll be in there. That's fine. Okay. The Romulan that's in there decides to shoot at you. If you like to spend momentum, if there is any, to avoid injury. I don't know if there is. Uh, there is, I think, three left. Let me double check. Yeah, we still have three left. Uh, if people are cool with me using one to try to dodge, or I can see how unlucky this guy is. Sure. Down to cool. two. Okay, so you dive for cover. You throw yourself into the transporter room doing a Jordy roll. And uh, she does every time engineering breaks. <laughs> oh. And you go around the corner in the disruptor blast not hit the transporter console because you did not get the complication. Which means now it goes to answer. And uh, by the way, Pick is in full-on mortal martial arts combat with the most intimidating looking Romulan. Okay. Um... I will do my... Minor action to move to the transporter room with Dersha. Okay. And then... If you do it as the minor action, you can't quite get in there, but you can get through the doorway. That's fine. Once I'm in there, I will... You will purr? Are you a triple now? Yes. I was a secret triple sleeper agent the entire time. <laughs> um... Uh, I have I have a jerktastic question to ask. Yes. Because man, this makes me feel like an asshole. Um, am I in a position of authority? For your own crew, yes. Um, you are acting captain at the moment. I was gonna say, am I the designated mission leader yes. currently? Okay. Yeah. Then I will move to the doorway and I will use the direct action, which means that I nominate a single other character present and that nominated character may immediately attempt a single task assisted by the commanding character, which is me. I will say, um, moving in uh, into the door, uh, Chief Dersha, get the. You're kind of in a much lower serious voice. Chief Dersha, get the transporter online immediately. And it would be a real shame if something from the Dauntless was left here when we went back home, correct? Um, what do you think I'm doing? And are you being sarcastic or do you want me to leave Sakem here? <laughs> Perhaps something from. Perhaps something from the torpedo room might make its way back here. Oh, I can do that. Good. And then, so that'll be my direct, and then I'll just yell for free, like, everyone in the transporter room! Hey, Thursia. Hey, so that, that, that means, that, yeah, she gets the immediate action to prime the, the transporter, so we don't have to wait. Engineering uh, plus daring. But Am I still down a dice from the ale? Oh no, you're all real sober now. Those were just for rules. I, I get politics. to assist as well. So, and, how does assisting work? Uh, you roll the same dice pool, and if you get at least one success, it's plus one diversion. Okay, you said engineering plus what? Uh, daring. Daring. However, before okay. you start rolling, if you want to buy extra dice, you should, because your difficulty is four to transport a oh, torpedo damn. into the Romulan ship. Uh... We're running low, though, so I you really want to check with, with the rest of my party. Buy it with threat. Like, let's not go crazy with threat, but this is, you know, a big or you could, scene. You could, you could use your determination norm or a, uh, yeah. or a uh, vote. Oh, I forgot about votes. Uh, I forget how many votes I have. I have at least one. I have, um, I know I have, like, four cat. like, what are the differences between the cast votes and the audience votes? Cast votes are determination. Audience votes are... Okay! 
Um, then I would happily, I have four cast votes, so I would happily spend uh, two of those. Okay. So that's four, and that's all you need. But you might as well Hold on, let's generate anyways. momentum. All right. Roll it anyway so, yeah. to generate momentum back to the pool. So do I roll or no? Yes. Okay. Um, so that is three successes. It's three momentum. What about Ansar? Because yours counts too. No successes. Okay, three more momentum back to the pool, Patty. Nice. Back at five, people. Nice. That was awesome. And yeah, and I'm just yelling, everyone to the to the transporter now, now. The last Romulan not engaged in physical combat. Usually got a boost by the way from Spinkma Bay. <clears throat> and Hot Dog Wizard gives uh, Steve the subscriber boost. Hey, thank you, thank you. The last Romulan who's not in combat actually has the NPC version of Ansar's power shoots one of the other Romulans who evaporates, the one that was going to try to kill Robeck. Huh. And the thing that she yells is at the transporter Romulan who turns and fires at the console destroying it. You managed to program in the command, which means you have a problem now. The pad's going to execute in 60 seconds, whether you're on it or not. Torpedoes coming through at the same time. Now we move okay. back to second mission accomplished. So the the last two Romulans seeing uh, the new sub commander murder one of their own and uh, order the murder of the captain just kind of stop fighting. But it's still your turn, second. So uh, Sekem is back to normal. Yes. And you're not holding a bloody knife, so he no idea anything happened. Well, I'm sure that they would see the carnage. Yes, but you wouldn't know, like, I know you, and so, for the audience, Sekum has no idea when this happens, but there's also no evidence to convince you it happened, because Robeck is holding a bloody knife standing over the dead captain, from your point of view. Robeck, what have you done? I have killed this Romulan dog. Transporter, now! Uh, Sekem will confusedly run towards, uh, Lieutenant Conan. Yeah, if, if I can, I'm just gonna scream, we got 60 seconds! Uh, more Romulans come into the hallway and the sub-commander yells, Captain Ansar. The sub-commander? Leaving so the soon. The stabbed one? No. The new one. The uh, lady. The new one. Oh. The one who activated Sekum. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um. Um. <laughs> I'll look at her. Unfortunately, it just appears as though we're getting a little bit too hostile in our negotiations here. Will everyone cool down and come back? I'll look this up because we can eat it. There it is. Uh, if you insist, Narek, Sekum, you immediately react to that turn and say yes. You'll stay yes. with me, to which you would say yes, Sub Commander, and refuse to go in the transporter. Yes, Sub Commander. Mr. Pick, Mr. Robeck secured the doctor immediately. We have 30 seconds. There are now 11 Romulans in the hallway pointing disruptors at Pick and oh, Robeck. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Plus, Robeck just looks at you as you issue that command and he just goes, why would I take a Romulan traitor? <laughs> there it is. And I go and stay on the pad. 
So, now it's up to answer. Leave second behind or not. There are 11 Romulans on their ship holding disruptors and Sekum. They're not willing... actively shooting at Robeck or Pick, but they will if Robeck or Pick try to take Sekum. Right. There are 11 Romulans with disruptors backing up this person. Sekum is willingly walking towards them at this point in my vision. No, I'm not making any, like, with that kind of clarified, I wouldn't even have ordered it. Like, that's just, it is what it is. Um... All right, Dershit. Let's see some Star Trek nonsense. What's your techno babble answer for how you're going to stop the torpedo from blowing everyone up? Paraphase transporter harmonics are behaving abnormally. And then I'm Wait, gonna... we don't want the torpedo to blow up anymore? I still want the torpedo to blow up. Yeah, so Robex willing to die honorably. <laughs> This is a good I thought, day to uh, die. I thought Wait, we were going to be transported no, at the yeah. same time. With my understanding that we're all getting off is the torpedo comes in. That that's wasn't, your, well, that's that your wasn't assumption. delayed. That, that's your assumption, yes. Okay. Did I waste uh, my techno baffle? Oh, no. I assumed you as your character would not let Sekum die, but it's up to you. Romulan traitor. I mean, how many how many traitors among the Bajorans were there for the Cardassians? There were many collaborators. Mm hmm. Um, but Dirja made a severe effort not to harm any innocents. Oh. And technically, some of the resistance would consider Dirja a collaborator. So. She took a softer stance on that sort of thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a dice. Okay. If it's evens. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't mean I was I sorry, brain and mouth set worked at the same time. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're right. I was gonna say, I'm gonna roll a dice. Evens, gonna leave it. No, I'm just, I'm just not gonna let it blow. Okay, that was kind of what I was saying. I'll say like, um, when, when you said your techno babble, I would just be like, well, we're not, we don't even have a stick. We don't even have a console anymore. You said you shot it. Yes, Dirge is now tearing panels off the wall of the transporter pad. Okay. Um, if you can create a, if you can create a focused beam uh, to reharmonize the energy wave that might bend the transporter of of the incoming signal enough to get it off the ship. I can operate the Barisium crystal and ar articulation with a parafire transporter console and mobile laser weapons with thermalite disruptors, but that's about it. Perfect. Oh. Good. This, this generator's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> engineering roll plus uh, daring. Two successes. Okay. Uh, the transporter does not transport anything off the ship. There's a slight shuddering of the ship as the torpedo explodes in space somewhere between the two ships. Deflector shields absorb the damage. Uh, the new sub commander walks calmly into the transporter room with Sekum at her side. And all the Romulans behind her now have their weapons lowered. Slight Romulan smile to answer. Well played, Captain. I also admire the torpedo trick. Impressive. Well, now that we have a slight understanding of each other's capabilities and willingness perhaps we can talk a bit more openly I concur what do you recommend we do about our mutual problem Fix it. Ideas. Uh, 
Well, Q wanted a show. We'd given them a bit of a show. We could just ask if that's enough. Flash of light, bowler hat, Q appears, slow clapping. Grinning ear to ear. She's right, that was very entertaining. And in the end, you did work together. Well done. But, you still couldn't do it without killing each other, which was slightly disappointing. How about a compromise, captains? I'll give you a little nudge. I'm keeping your commanding officers for now. I'll be in touch! Flash of light, he's gone. See you soon, echoes from the air. And then the ship accelerates into instant warp. <laughs> Wait, what goes into warp? The ship you're on and the Dauntless, don't worry. Okay. Both ships, are, God. Both ships are flung through transwarp, which, you know, only a Q can do. And come out of it minutes later in orbit around a class M world. Somewhat closer to your destination of home. Several parsecs closer. Which is quite a lot. Okay. Shaved a couple years off the trip. Well, Sub Commander, it would appear as though that we did, in fact, please these anomalies. Seem to be released currently, but without our commanding officers. So, congratulations on your new ship and your new commission. The same to you. She walks up to you, grabs your hand, does an awkward run, but just don't quite know how to handshake. Handshake. Sub Commander Tala. Perhaps. Bigger run than smile. We could have a private dinner sometime and discuss things. And then she gestures away from this room and towards the other transporter room. Perhaps one day, but for now I want to get my people back to our ship. Yes, and then we'll see what we'll see at this world together for now. I have to ask, what is happening with my doctor? Glances at second. Looks back at you. Contemplates your face for a minute. We have many agents in your Federation, because you never know when they may be useful. They're one, though they know it not. Do not worry. Light rock and smile. She's no danger to you. They're no danger to you. Second is a day, yes. Mm -hmm. No danger unless you decide they should be. I don't like I that. recommend your plugs, Romulan sarcasm. Oh. That's so charming. <laughs> as long as you take no hostile action against us, give you my word. I will not use them. Take hostile actions against you. It's very kind of you, and a wonderful diplomatic position. We have no interest in taking hostile action against you right now. Kind of just glancing at Robeck. <laughs> so, we're in the second transport room now, right? By now you are, because you're walking and talking, yeah. Or at least you're so really we're, close. We're so we're standing on the pad? Not yet, but you're in the room. Okay. Get, they're like is, priming it, yeah. Is Dr. Sakem with us, like on yes. our side? Like coming back with us? Yes. And how are we How are we to guarantee that there won't be any rhymes and trickery? Are you the only one that knows Sakem's activation? On this ship, yes. I am the highest ranking. Inside! On this ship. Roll it. Insight plus control. I'm sorry. Insight plus uh, man. 
too many things for one screen. How do people do one screen? <laughs> Good question. Insight plus command. That's a low number. Oof. Insight plus command. That is three successes because I'm using a focus with the espionage. She is not lying when she says she's the highest ranking Kalshiar agent on this ship and the only one with the activation phrase. That's that's a true statement. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Out of character, so we kill her, right? Yeah, right. I was Well, okay, so going along that line, that's why I asked the layout of the scene. So as we're doing the whole thing, we're getting on the transporter pad. Like they're priming it. They're about to energize. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna Robeck wants to time this story with them energizing. Subcommander, are you familiar with House Kundikel? I imagine not. We are a smaller house. Much glory has been won for us, but we are not as large as some of the other prouder houses of Kalas. I am. However, do you remember the encounter at Names Klingon Star System here? Which you would. Yes. I took great pride in destroying your cousin's vessel. Hmm. You must not have taken care, or probably would not take care, as the Romulans you are of our culture. House Kum Dekel is known for a very particular trick. And the whole time, just kind of like fiddling with the Romulan blade I took. And as we're energizing, I want to time this perfectly. We are the House of Blades. I want to throw the dagger at her. Yeah! And I'm going to spend all of my hope. I'm spending all my audience votes. I'm spending the boost uh, Dwayne gave me earlier in chat. I'm spending my determination. I want to roll. And I'm going to... I'm, I'll get, I'm I'll sorry, guys. I, I'm, no, taking, I would, I'm taking... I would approve all the threat. Like, there's no I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm taking two of them. I'm going to take at least two of the momentum as well. Or, yeah, two of the momentum. Hot. Go ahead. I cool. would save some of that determination. But do the rest. Okay. So... What does a audience boost give me? Momentum, one point each. Okay. Oh, hi, Raiders! And what does audience votes like do as well? Oh no, audience votes are momentum. Audience boost is... Uh... Uh, hot, hot Dog Wizard boost did you, Patty? Okay. I gotta look, That's two, audience. That's two audience boosts. It's two audience boosts and I have three audience votes. Plus I'm taking two momentum. I think... Isn't it an extra? Is it a die? Is it a free die? Oh, or... audience uh, boosts are group momentum. Audience votes are personal. That's how we separated them. Okay. Okay. All right. And so we're allowing you to momentum, take any group momentum six you want. Momentum. Okay. So I'm going. I'm going to have six momentum, so six dice, plus my two I normally get, so eight, eight. <laughs> eight dice. Yep. You can only have oh, five amazing. dice. That's the. That's the. Category. Damn it. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to take the group momentum. I'm not okay. going to take those two momentum then because uh, I get enough from the votes. Never more than five in Odivius games. Uh, that is... Focuses, I imagine. Four, five. That is five successes. And if you want... If... Robeck? The GM's giving you two personal momentum for being badass. Okay. After you get screwed. So I, plan, I plan for this, but not for you. I actually plan for this for your turn. Uh, smiling at you the whole time as the knife sails towards her. Oh, absolutely. A second throws herself in front of the knife on reflex. And it hits her. Ooh. Hits them. Hits them. Yes. Right where the love should be. Hits okay. The so Patrick pad feels your... bad. Lance on the Robeck does not feel bad. Lance on the transporter pad and is transported back to the Dauntless. How much damage would that knife do, Robeck? Uh, okay. Treat it like so... a Klingon knife. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, so. With five be, successes. The um, bonus stress I get. I, I have eight. Like, so the way, like, my weapons work is they all have, like, a. A number tied with them yep. 
Uh, I have eight for blades. That's eight then, d6. Yeah. And then I get, and then it inflicts a bonus stress no matter what. Yep. Uh, okay. So roll those d6. What um? Does it have any other like? Uh, uh it also has a vicious one. Okay, so that's five damage then, because vicious takes extra successes. Oh, full, it turns it into stress. Vicious turns extra successes into extra damage ticks. So if it's one to hit, that's four damage before he even rolls his d6s. Yep. Well, well five, because I got the plus one for my, my blades ability. So okay. that's five stress damage right there already. All right. Roll your d6s. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, so someone's got to look up what the what the faces one is translate one, to one, one is one, one damage two, two is two damage three, and three four, four is zero damage five and six is one damage with an activation of Whatever other traits is. and yeah. abilities okay so five more damage so 10 damage total you have 14 stress in this swarm second so you were not dead or even unconscious but you are fucked up to use not star trek words <laughs> you have a punctured lung it's not great. And you rematerialize the transporter pad of the Dauntless. The secure and the transporter chief immediately starts freaking out. You know, you can transport away diseases, but not injuries to Star Trek. Right. <laughs> I'll just I'll just look down at Sakem just like bleeding out and be like, hmm. One Romulan for another, I suppose. And uh Deirge's like running off the pad and screaming block all incoming transport shield ship like all that like she doesn't want any Romulans following them which they do not not because you didn't get your orders through but because it's not what the sub commander wants Robeck she would be a sworn blood enemy though she killed her family oh yeah 100% no yeah yeah no. She that, that bitch is gonna die <clears throat> You can write down, because I forgot to tell you, but we're going to retcon and say she did that uh, her name is Tala, T-E-L-A. You did tell us that. Okay, good. Spell it one more time, I'm sorry. T-E-L-A, Tala. Okay. Robeck will just very calmly walk off the transporter pad. <clears throat> Uh, so, so grow back to bridge. Prepare for bridge coup to re return. Red alert, shields up. Take us to a safe distance. The bridge. We'll just the person at the con says, uh, Ansar? What are your orders? Very awkwardly. Um. Something on yelling in the background. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could, I'll I'll hit uh, yeah, just. Uh, order confirmed. <laughs> no, I, sure you're the best. <laughs> I just uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw. <laughs> okay, they do so on your confirmation. Yeah. Uh, so while we'll say Durja, no, I want Durja in this scene for the drama. While Pick takes Sekum to sickbay to initiate emergency surgery with, uh, oh, as he's if he tries to do them, just like belay that order, soldier. Oh, Pick ignores Let you. The ro Let the Let the traitor bleed. Pick does not even acknowledge you're talking. He's just. Fire carry suck him down the hall at a dead sprint. I'm gonna move in his way then. Oh, then Deers is like stepping in front of you. It's like we have no idea if Sekum they understands. Are, they are a traitor and a Romulan. <sighs> what? You never saw sleeper agents? Like the idea that a Klingon could be turned against their own people is laughable if Klingons left. 
Well, Sekum isn't a Klingon, so deal with it. I am dealing with it. I'm letting them bleed. Then sit your ass down right here on the floor. Let them go. Dick's already halfway down the hallway. That's all Deirdre's really Robin trying to do is find time to get I mean, away. Vulcans move so, fast when they want to. Okay, there's a lot happening. Sorry. I'm going to look straight over at Ansar then and be like, they are a traitor and deserve to die. We don't are, know that. I have all the part, proof I need. They are a Federation officer, part of the crew, obviously under a form of mind control that acting outside of their own... What more evidence desires. do you need? Mr. Robeck, I'm going to ask you to not... They are a sleeper agent used by the Romulans. You they can no it. longer ever be trusted. Everything they have done has always been for the betterment of the Romulan Empire. And to think otherwise is foolishness. Mr. Robeck, calm yourself. If you are to continue to trust them, to treat them, and to advise that they remain alive, I must challenge that authority. We're not challenging any authority. This is not your ship. And it's not yours, Lieutenant. As long as I'm wearing this Federation uniform is more mine than yours. Now will you join me? Now will you join me on the bridge to provide your insight? You can either answer my challenge or you can walk away in disgrace and I will take it from you. Now here comes the second twist of the actual storyline. This is your fault, Steve. What was the name of the uh, Klingon you created last session, Robeck? Ujili. Ujili steps into the transporter room, flanked by four Klingons holding disruptors, pointing at Robeck, saying, No, no, you won't do that, Captain. He gestures Wait, towards them. Ansar to join him. Wait, they're pointing their disruptors at Robeck. At Robeck? Your what is this betrayal? Your disgruntled, angry Klingon that really hated Robeck has fomented insurrection <laughs> among the Klingons. They've chosen sides. Da Ojili, stow that weapon. And I will forget this transgression and this dishonorable way of challenging my authority. You may have honor, but you're not the one that's kept us alive. He is. Only through my advisement. And we are in even more danger than we were before because of his course of action. That's your opinion. Our ship I'm gonna is bull rush him. Mr. Mr. No, I'm, uh, I'm gonna I, bull. I'm gonna bull rush you, Jilly. I will. I will step in the way then and take the full hit. And I know I'm gonna get my ass kicked on this one. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Robeck slams you into the wall, and now you're face to face. We'll do it from there. The, yeah, I'll take it from there, Mr. Robeck. <laughs> You're up in the air. <laughs> Perhaps, I'm like cringing from like ribs, probably. Mr. Robeck, in case you haven't noticed, we are under red alert. Please report to the bridge and your duty station. <laughs> and I'll just throw him <laughs> against the wall and I will purposely walk straight towards my, the Klingon defectors. If they attempt to stop me, I will use lethal force uh but i will then go to my quarters when he sees you walking towards him with rage but no weapons drawn or fits raised he doesn't get in your way because he knows how klingons work he is one. <laughs> you 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 elbow bump so hard you can hear bone crack <laughs> <sighs> uh, chief acting captain ansar this is the other klingon yeah. We will support you as commander of the ship for now on one condition. I'll look, I'll look at him and just be like, save your conditions. And then I will walk up. Chief Dirge, I believe engineering needs you. Likely. Uh, however, I am curious about hearing that condition. I like to hear out my friend is good because then the Klingons decide not to point their disruptors at Anthar. 
Uh, Robeck is your first officer. <laughs> Robeck's my first officer? <laughs> there are worse choices. He is the most experienced and honorable among us, but he has to I, learn. I get Tactical okay. acumen, we believe. So holding my bruised ribs with these four... Again... I'm just gonna I'm gonna reiterate. Save your conditions for when we are out of red alert. If he wants to be first officer, I will see him on the bridge. And I will leave this behind because we are under attack. Um, are we though? You're fine. You're gonna be. You're fine. The Klingons all smile at your back because that's how a Klingon would have handled it. <laughs> Fuck you, we're busy. Right. <laughs> yeah, and Deirdre will go to engineering to do whatever she needs to do. Um, I will. Uh, I'll say, Deirdre, take one of the Klingons. I want the. I want the cloaking device on as soon as or active as soon as possible. It's time we see what the Dauntless can do. I can handle that without a Klingon. By the way, this whole thing took like five or six minutes. Romulans did nothing. You're only at red alert because you assume they're going to attack you because Robeck threw a knife at the lady. They have done That's nothing. That's what a red alert is. Presumed, you know, in the attack. They have done nothing. So. And when you get to the bridge, their shields are down and their weapons are powered up, but they're not aimed at you. Do we hail them? Robeck, no. do you storm angrily to the bridge? To be part of the scene? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So is it that moment where we're all going to the different stations, so Deirja's fully in charge of engineering, Robeck comes up to the first officer. Is it me and me and Robeck kind of like staring at each other with my me holding my ribs when we look at the first officer in captain's chair? Basically. And from Robeck's point of view, essentially it's almost but not quite half and half. There's enough of them to force your hand, but not enough that you couldn't, you know, change things later. Mr. Robeck, will we okay? Constant mutinies for who's captain. <laughs> <clears throat> the issue of your lack of honor will be dealt with later. And I will Perfect. sit in the. F I will sit in the first mage chair. Take a deep breath. That hurts horribly from ribs. Sit in the captain's chair. <laughs> well, I feel very much like Fuller Hat Q is very amused right now. Even though you can't see him. Mr. Robeck, their shields are down, weapons are powered up, but they are not in a offensive position. It is how because does, they do not have the necessary power to fuel all of their all of their systems at once. I noticed while we were on the ship, they are still undergoing repairs. How's the clean on? How's the clean on? Can I tell if that's true from where I am? Storytelling. What was the question again? Sorry, there was a side message. No, you're good. Uh, can I tell now that I'm like at my station if they do indeed not have enough power to attack us? No, they do have enough power. They're choosing not to. She is not retaliating for that assassination attempt deliberately. Huh. Um, I disagree. And she's like doing whatever she does at the station to check that. And she's like, they could if they wanted to, but they're not. They would they not be able to power all of their systems at the same time. It would be foolish to engage with us at this moment. They hail you. No. You don't answer their hail? No. Eve, check Sorry. your side. Deirdre looks and goes, that's mature. Uh, from you, ever? Yes. OK. Permission granted. Sorry, see, see, secret messages. Permission granted, but you can't do that this way. You have to do that in person. I need that scene in my life. 
Okay. For a future session. Well, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see about that. For now, <laughs> um, the, uh, out of character. Um, well, no, I'll, I'll I'll respond since I'm sure Helm is saying like you know hail. Yeah. Um, I will be like, um, cause it's, it's an activation word, right? Four. You you heard four. You just didn't catch what they were. Sure, sure, sure. But they only need to speak the word to activate. Oh, as far as you know, it's audio only. Yeah. However, yeah. Sekum is not on the bridge. Sekum's in sick bay under emergency surgery. Right. Right. Um. However. At this point in time, we do not know if they have an additional sleeper agent on board. To have Doctor to have Doctor Seckham as a sleeper agent in such a high position, infiltration of Section Thirty One. I do not want that voice on my bridge. Delicious paranoia. Sorry. I said, "Oh, the delicious paranoia I am creating." Yeah, exactly. Exa yeah, that's what I was playing into. Uh, um, is there an analog you would be more comfortable with? Can we? message that you could distort the voice so that it like it wouldn't sound right would that satisfy you captain the only federation officer you can guarantee has not been oh made an agent of theirs is me no uh that's actually true but also not distort the voice force the computer to translate all romulan words to federation english i don't know what the hell they use common we'll call it common because it's not well, english. i mean yeah so that would because the command words were romulan right well i mean there's a the universal romulan, translator yeah, right. so yeah okay all right uh, okay all right it seems like we need to have this conversation all right uh yes fine distort uh the voice pulled through and we'll see what they have to say yes sir screen pops on it's her flanked by two other people captain commander romulan smirk here real quick it's I pleasure for, to see I you again it's in been the, a in while the, in the spirit of uh what i was looking for in the spirit of cooperation i forgive you Anything else to say? Are you ready to explore this world to find out why it brought us here? Or shall we go without you? Moot. Mute. Mute. <laughs> yeah. Moot. Come, Lieutenant, I have stood by, I have bowed and I have not forcibly taken control of anything as you met with, talked with, negotiated with these vermin. But to collaborate with them, that is another level. To stay away from them now is to let them have an advantage over us. Who knows what they'll What advantage? We are on the same level right now. Surely we can put stock in our warriors and our scientists that they are better than theirs and we will learn more on our no, own. No, the only way to maintain our equal footing is either to prevent them from exploring this world if we ourselves refuse to do so, or join. That's it. Then blow them out of the sky. That is not up to me. And it's not up our, to you either. Our weapon system, we don't have any issues with our weapons or shield systems. It's just our warp drive, right? Right. And I mean, that's mostly fluff. You could warp too. You just can't go, you can't sustain maximum warp for very long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I remember you said we could limp along for a little bit. The problem is, um, they have bigger guns. <laughs> 360 firing arc, you said. And right. it's just a bigger ship. It's, it's galaxy class sized. Actually, no. The Dideridex dwarfed the Enterprise. It is way bigger than you. Okay. Mr. Robeck, I hear you acknowledged. I hear you acknowledged. Unfortunately, right now, we do not have the tactical advantage. 
for combat. Turn the back um on comms. Unmute. And the children done bickering. As I'm sure you can gather from your infinite wisdom, tensions are a bit high right now. I believe the best course I don't of action see why. Will ha- no one tried to assassinate you. I yet. see. Hmm. Perhaps we divide up the planet, send our individual teams down and report back in the nature of trust. I'm sure we'll share everything that we find. Agreeable. Perfect. Have your science well have your science officer contact my science officer and we will divide up the planet by resources and we'll take an equal sharing. As you wish. His view screen turns off. Mr. Robeck, I'm sure you and Chief Derja will be able to find some sort of tactical weakness in their power systems. Bring some of those guns offline. It will be my sole focus. Thank you. What I'm good at. Well, that and making things as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of do the turn in chairs so that I'm looking at him, Mr. Robeck. Well, not as ready for war as you. I will not shy away from it when it is time. I will say, if it sways Robeck's opinion any, for those of you that, depending on your point of view, have had the pleasure or displeasure, watching Picard season one, this lady is a, is a thousand percent Arisa. The swagger and the confidence and the danger level is high. <clears throat> I'll think on his words for a second. Then perhaps we will walk the river of blood together. I'll stand up. Chief, I believe we have been assigned a duty. Joy, yes. Like how the botanist is leaking through. Sorry. I'll I'll stand up. I'll stand up, do the shirt tug. Yeah. Stand down, red alert. Red alert is stood it down. Helm, plot a course for the opposite side of the planet. I want an entire planet between us and them at all times. Understood, Captain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I will go. I'm going to sick bay to check on our doctor. Jump hmm. scene to Thick Bay. <laughs> hmm. A Klingon who is hmm. actually royal, loyal to Robeck is with you, whether you want him to be or not. He, unless Robeck says otherwise, he has not been ordered to kill, but he's been ordered to note every fucking thing that happens. Sure. Oh, oh yeah. The first movement towards sleeper agent activity or action. <laughs> So, in the sick bay, Ansar is a very sedated second with Pick also standing there holding a phaser just in case, because he's unsure what's going to happen when you bring them out. Like, the wounds yeah. are attended to, but they are intentionally sedated until you decide what course to take. I will stand over Sekum and not only reach out with my mind, but do the whole touching of the forehead thing and get the real deep reading. I want to, I want to not obviously not mind meld, but um... actually, Pick offers to do that and be the conduit if you want. I don't know if Pick can actually do that, but it's good for the scene. I don't remember. I think he took a bench, but I can't remember. Okay, but it, it kind of similar. Like, can we do the mind meld with no risk of further infection of the 
He would explain to you it shares Control. only emotion, not action. And it would not remove second from sedation. Like, it's not going to wake second from. And it won't, like, you won't suddenly become a Romulan sleeper agent, but you would experience whatever emotion second did. Which theoretically will be some, because if they're Romulan, they can feel things. Right. Stronger than a Vulcan. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Out of character, that was the perfect cover being half Betazoid. That's right. Because, you know, Betazoid's emotions. <laughs> very, very <laughs> emotion. Yeah. Very emotion, such feel. Wow, mood. Uh, you initiate the mind melt, complete with all the drama appropriate to such thing. <laughs> and you, get, you get to have your cheek awkwardly massaged. Right, right yeah, just dull. <laughs> I get that thumb up in the cheekbone. As you explore Sekum's mind as a telepath in uh, mind meld, what do you want to see or try to see? What am I trying to see? Yeah, what are you after? Um, I I want to I want to do layers if I can. So top layer, most immediate thing. How do they feel about what, like what's happening to them? I'm looking for. What does your unconscious sleeping self feel about what's happening right now? Okay, first is the funny answer. Okay. <laughs> um, think, think of it like the layers too. I want like the highest like surface thought first, and we'll go like deeper and deeper each one. Surface feeling is confusion. Okay. Uh, how many layers are there? What? What? How? How thick of an onion am I? Am for, I like for this purpose, two C's or three C's? For this purpose, we're gonna call it for surface thoughts, uh, actual whatever you're dreaming about, which you can make as weird as you want based on what happened to you. The third level will be actual thoughts subconsciously, as second though, like with words and tech context. The fourth layer will be an impenetrable wall. That when Ansar pushes on it, causes both him and you pain. That's the conditioning. Hmm. Okay. So the dreams that Sakam is, uh, that it, uh, is having uh, are dreams of their conditioning experience, which involved probably a lot of torture and everything, um, because it was unwilling. Um, oh. If you want to let him see that, which is fine. What you're seeing is, uh, uh, what's that show we were watching? There Steve? are four lights. What's that show we were watching, Steve? On, uh, wow, with the girl assassin. It was a movie, and then they made it a TV show. Hannah. Yeah, it's the school that Hannah went to, where all the other girls did. It's that. Got it. Or I've Black never Widow's seen that training. Mm-hmm. You should, you should watch a good movie. Yeah, they're not all girls in this case, though, but it's kids sure, sure, conditioned sure. from a young age. You also get a glimpse of Sekum's mother very unwillingly allowing this to happen under duress. But so they're, so they're a child themselves. when this happened. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe 10? Maybe. Okay. All right, so confusion, dreaming about the conditioning, and then what's like your deep subconscious thought about all this? Anger. Probably the deep, level of anger. An unreasonable amount of anger for a reason that Sekem themselves does not know. Okay. It's also very clear to you that Sekem doesn't understand at all what's happening to them. Yeah. And there's no memory there's no conscious memory of the event, merely the subconscious nightmare. Okay. And then the final layer causes real physical pain just trying to touch it. Okay. They, they scream in unison. But Sekum still doesn't wake up. Picking the Klingon, pull their weapons out. <laughs> I'll call, like, the medical assistant over. Okay. What's their physical condition? Stable. Okay. 
They could return to duty if necessary. How long will the sedation last naturally? I can wake them up whenever you're ready, sir. It's Klingon says, or not. They're dreaming. Terrible, horrible dreams. Confusion, hurt, anger. They don't know what they've done or why they're doing it. It's but it's been driving them. Thinking about what that means for Sekum, how it's, it kind of answers like why you've been quick to violence, you know, shockingly, all those kind of things. They've held on to this part of themselves for so long. Got something else in there too that just now oh. enters your conscious mind. Okay. A deep rooted. Ocean levels thick amount of resolve. And if you could just figure out how to help them tap into the very thing that makes them so good at being an assassin, that Romulan stubbornness could help them overcome the conditioning. Interesting. They've held on to this for so long, it's driven them so far into this life. But I imagine this doctor's. I imagine the doctor's going to change dramatically in the not too distant future. I'll kind of lean down, put my hand on the shoulder. Dream one more time. Take in your anger. It changes from here. And I kind of whisper that into their ear. I'll turn, let them sleep it off. Let them dream. And I'll walk out of sick bay. Klingon hesitates for a second, but follows. He thought about it. He really thought about trying to make Robeck proud, but he didn't do it. Me? Oh, oh just no, killing, he, he was killing them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I will leave Sekum to their torture dream one last time. And that's where we're going to pause for this week. Explore the strange new world next week. I feel like I've vomited enough chaos for one session. Stand down from yellow alert, return to duty stations, and prepare for the night shift. We must retire to our quarters and have a refreshing sonic shower. And maybe relax in the hollow suite after an eventful shift. Many thanks, audience, for exploring strange new worlds with us this week, and we hope you'll boldly return next Thursday. Special thanks to our patrons and Twitch subscribers who help make our quality better, our cosplay sharper, and help us feed all the pets. There are many. Thanks to the Foundry, uh, Pond5, Miguel Johnson, CJ Beards, the Makai Symphony, Nioko, Scott Buckley, and Isaac Vale for all the cool music. Bridge Crew, please inform the viewers what other shows you'll be taking your shore leave in before next week. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Steve. Tonight I played Ansar Conan. You can find me online at Voodoo Arcade. Pronouns he, him. The next time you can find me will not be tomorrow for our usual Scarred Lands game because stream of a different type. 48 for, hours survival for, gaming marathon. For days. Milestone. Stream for days. Uh, yeah, two day stream starts tomorrow. So no Scarred Lands. So theoretically, you should see me on Sunday? Question mark. Is that right? Yep. Vampire is still on. Vampire is still on. Sunday. Vampire. Smoke. Starlight. Nora. Bad things. Watch it with your face and your ears. Which are on the side of your face, not your actual face. Done. Oh, that was beautiful. 
Oh god. Hey everybody, I've enjoyed playing the uh, uh, sleeper Romulan assassin Betazoids, so I get to feel all of their emotions when I kill them. Isn't that fun? Didn't think about that, did you? Anyway, you can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever, because I am the verbal changeling around here. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, you can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co. Designs. I have just, shit, they're not near me. Oh, well, later. Uh, I, I've just printed off some, uh, bloody <laughs> stickers, if anyone's interested. And they're going up in my shop, so... Yeah. Um, next. Hello, I am Patrick. You can find me on the internet at PattyShakes underscore. Tonight I played Robeck of House Kuhn Uh The next time you'll see me will be uh, a disembodied voice sometimes during the 48 hour marathon this weekend as I hop in chat and heckle everyone. Uh, and then the next time you'll see me play a character will be next week th on Thursday for the next session of this wonderful uh, Adventures of the USS Dauntless. Hi, I'm Rosie, regular size mom, and tonight I have Deirja Abosa for you. Uh, and I will not be here next week because I'll be on vacation. So I'm just going to say that uh, Deirja would have complimented Robeck on his very impressive knife work uh, before getting down to business uh, and said that if he wanted to work on more hand-to-hand -hand combat type stuff, she was quite skilled in the use of the Ushantar. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, so you can have fun with that next episode while I'm gone and I'll come back and find out what you've done to my character. <laughs> um and You're not in a stick of butter. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, um, but you will see me again on the 26th, on the 26th, back here doing more Star Trek. And then you can see me for the next two nights here on Vorpal Tales. On the 27th, I'll be eating pickles in one of the milestones. And then you'll see me being drunk and playing Paranoia on the 28th in another milestone. So I will be here the 26th, 27th, 28th. Yes. Three days of mom. Three days of regular size mom. Yes. And uh, keep an eye on Gehenna Gaming. I'll let you know when I'm there. Robeck. Uh, oh, wait, before I just, uh, he started the game with us, but he could not finish. Uh, we will just say that JT was here earlier. Uh, sorry he wasn't able to finish, but you should check him out online. And his Twitter is at Zenzamancer. He does cool stuff with websites and Twitters and stuff. So, Oh. Yeah. Get, get the plug in. Oh, you know? good with that. Robeck, one note. Yeah. Unless you specifically tell me in a GM otherwise. Every session now. There's going to be quiet dice rolls as the number of Klingons on the ship slowly diminishes and we will determine where the balance of power goes as they kill each other for dominance. God damn it. <laughs> this is why... This is goddamn Klingons. But you can stop it by simply saying, nope, this week I'm happy in my post or pretending to be. That'll be up to you. Oh, right. um... Just a... I see my, my husband... Your big dad in chat has reminded me to plug Carrying Comfort Studios, where I am a Zestra in Heart City Beneath. Uh, we're coming up on our last two episodes, so keep an eye on that. And it's a really fun game, and they're doing a lot of cool stuff over there. It's just watch it. It's, it's a cool place and there's really cool people and check out their Discord if you're not already there. It's a fantastic community. Should should people watch it with their face? People should watch it with their face, their eyes, and particularly listen with their ears. Which are not on the face. But they're right next to it. Eyes and ears and <laughs> mouth and nose, head, shoulders, knees and toes. Yeah, I'm actually a mom. <laughs> Speaking of awesome people from Harry Comfort Studios, don't forget to come check out Brother West get horribly massacred in cult on Saturday with Ben. And a variety of horror tales. It's gonna be 
awesome. And answer. Yes. The Klingons are still watching you. And if the first time that strength is actually needed, if you hesitate, there will be a coup. Just saying. Sure. No, that makes sense. This is a tenuous balance power on this ship right now with no Commodore. All right, vote time for the ride or die viewers. As usual, viewers, each of your votes, I've seen some already, are worth a bonus personal momentum. Players, your votes are worth determination. Also, don't forget your milestone for the ARC milestone vote. It's going to be hard this week. Sure, it's not a clear winner. Begin! Oh, man. Um... Uh, we do ARC and then personal vote? Yeah, correct. Okay. I'm going to go with ARC vote is going to be Sekum because their big character reveal happened and that is going to change them dramatically going forward, I think. Uh, Sekum, ARC vote. Uh, personal vote, going to go... Are we even frenemies? Like, we just kind of hate each other. Um, it's so, secretly a romantic tension. That's all it's Vobek been this whole can't time. have a romantic tension with everybody. Yeah, but you know that uh, there's now going to be angry grudge romance fan fiction between Robek uh, and Ansar. Ansar doesn't know it, but saying that you could possibly rock the river blow with me was actually a low key, like, all right. Okay. We're getting somewhere. Uh, no, my, my personal vote goes to you, Patty, because we just had too much interpersonal role play to not give it to you. Oh no, now it's my turn. I, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna. Um, fuck. This is really hard. That's what she said. Shut up. Anyway. Just, that's what you <sighs> said it yourself. I did. Wow. Um, uh, it's the wig. My brain is melting. Uh, jeez, gosh, I, uh, okay. So I know who I'm gonna give it to. I'm gonna give, uh, uh, all of you get, get a, the honorary good job. It was amazing. But, Patty, you gave me fucking anxiety, man. <laughs> I was like, is this really gonna happen? Is Patty really gonna fight? and kill everybody i don't i don't know what's going on here and it terrified me but i loved it you're all just lucky i didn't have time to put together my destructor that i snuck on board nice also Correct. klingon in glasses i really wish one of our characters had said something he goes what klingons need assistance seeing sometimes as well or so i don't know something ridiculous like that anyway carry on was that your arc or regular? Oh shit. Um, regular. <sighs> okay, you get your arc. You can give it both if you want. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. My arc foot's gonna go to second for very obvious reasons. Uh, and my regular vote will go to Steve for also very obvious reasons. And uh, my arc vote has to go to Sekem because there's no putting that cat back in the bag. <laughs> and uh, character session. Uh, uh, I'm I'm really torn because I really enjoyed Ansar telling me to transport a torpedo onto the Romulan ship. It's <laughs> so uh, awesome. But and I also, it. I tried to, and I uh, I enjoyed Roback uh, throwing a knife to time it with the transporter. That was awesome. Yeah, that's badass. Um, so I'm really torn, but um, I am going to give it to Ansar for good use of your ability to uh, read people. Thank you. I mean, Sekum gets the arc milestone, hands down. Yeah. Perfect. 
Well done, crew. You're good with the uniform. Helm, take us to black alert. Tactical engage the cloak. And we'll see you all again next week.